All right, I'm back here at the site. I had a meeting with the architect a few weeks ago, and I just wanted to go over some of the notes that I took and some of the things we talked about. We talked about hot water, and so hot water, of course, yes, we, we're going to have hot water, but the decision was, did we want to use the instant hot water uh, heaters at the point of, of exit, or did we want to try to go with a centralized hot, uh, hot water uh, tank? And we kind of tossed around the pros and cons of that. And for the cost, eight or ten of the of the instant hot water heaters might, you know, might equate to one of the large systems. But what we felt that, that a lot of the cons were were, uh, you know, the, the wait time to get the hot water from the tank, you know, to your place of use, whether it be the shower or the sink, you know, much like it is in, in, in any other construction, you know, you're going to have some kind of wait time for the hot water to get to you. Uh, con number two, you have to have, <clears throat> at least some of that water has to be preheated and waiting, or you're just going to pump, you know, lukewarm or cold water to, to your customer there while they're waiting for that to heat up. I know all of us as kids can can relate to waiting for the hot water to come through the closet. So I decided on uh, just sticking with the, the instant hot water. So each, each shower would have its own and then we'll have under the counter uh, hot water systems for the sinks. Uh, we talked about whether I wanted to run fiber or cable inside the house. People may be surprised I'm choosing copper uh, for, for a couple reasons. The first reason, well, the kind of speeds that I'm going to be requiring or needing or even able to inject into the house. Uh, Fiber wouldn't be required. It's not going to make a difference. Uh, but the main reason that I I chose copper is so I can just run a complete PoE system, and that's power over Ethernet. So with by using that, I can alleviate uh, you know 10 or 20, possibly more later on uh, of requiring plugging into AC, whether it be a, a wireless access point or a CCTV camera, IP camera. Uh, I'm just going to totally take that off the table and, and just use PoE for everything. So, you know, everything's going to be terminating in the office. So I'm going to wire the inside of the house with cable, uh, copper We'll have a second floor switch, first floor switch, and then you know, backhaul that, possibly with fiber to the main, the main switch and router in the office. Talked about how many how many IP cams I'm going to start with initially. No cameras in the house, uh, with the exception of the pool area. Uh, the rest of the IP cams are going to be on the outside the house on all four corners uh, so we get multiple views on each side of the house and that's my starting point because of the size of the property there eventually will be a lot more uh, but that's that's the initial CCTV plan that'll be about between seven and ten cameras outside I talked about emergency lights and uh, and bug zappers uh, so that may seem insignificant but it's not when you take into account you need to plan for that outlet and you're going to want that outlet high up you know, preferably over a door or near a door 
Yeah, so so we planned outlets up there. It looks odd to have an outlet up there, but then you realize, you know, that's where your emergency light and, and your bug zapper can go. Regarding ceiling fans versus wall fans, this might sound strange as well, but I I kind of changed my outlook on ceiling fans and have been swayed by the oscillating wall fan. Now you don't see many of these in the West, but over here they're prevalent and it's it's nothing different than a regular oscillating fan except it mounts on the wall and it oscillates like that. You can also get some that mount on the ceiling and oscillate around and so far my experience has been they do a better job of cooling than your than your average ceiling fan. That's what uh, I've also planned for as far as outlets high on the walls wherever I want one of those fans. We did redesign the, the bar area, the sunken bar. Uh, I talked a little bit about that in the past video, but we went ahead and, uh, and, and made it the, the bar area wider, added a countertop so we can have under counter appliances such as an ice maker, you know, a, a small freezer or a small wine chiller, something like that. And uh, we were able to get more, a lot more use of the space that we had down there. And I added a lot more outlets uh, because of all the appliances that I think I'm going to use down there. Getting back to Wi-Fi, I'm going to put a uh, Wi-Fi access point that will be on all the major rooms and hallways. And those will also be powered. So uh, I just need uh, just one copper uh, Ethernet cable drop down in the, in the ceiling wherever I want that access point. So those were some of the main topics that, that came up during our meeting. And, but we're at the stage now where we're starting to talk about air conditioning. We're getting a couple quotes from, from different vendors. Um, one of the vendors that I, I had used um, for my garage, we purchased three air conditioners from them. And they're working fine. They're a split type. I like those, those kind. Uh, I have no issues with those. The, uh, another vendor is it's going to give us a quote and talk about uh, what they call a cassette type air conditioner. And this cassette type is the kind that goes up in the ceiling, say in the center of it, and, and it can have four vents. And I don't have much experience with that, so I want to learn more about that. In between all this construction going on, myself and Don Don have been working over the hill here on the Chateau d'If and if you're not familiar that's what we call the spring house. It's the structure that looks like a castle down here at the bottom of the hill. So that's the, the castle's done, the deep well's in, we're pumping water up to our tank now and uh, we took on a kind of a project to build a steel door for it. And we're starting to wrap that that steel door project up. So check that out if you're interested. It was, it was an interesting project to do. And so, you know, on top of, like I said, everything else, we've got generators uh, issues. We've got generator maintenance to do. We had a couple issues with water and fuel, things like that on the excavators too. Tomorrow morning we're going to start some maintenance uh, on those. This is Pequoy. Pequoy is one of the dogs that just kind of turns up, you know, on a construction site. And uh, they're so nice. This is Pequoy. His sister is Pequay. 
which is really good. We've got Picoy Picai, and over here is Valentino. Right? Real good. Real good boy. Real good boy. The main push over the last couple of weeks was working on uh, the back, the back area here of the pool. Dave, uh, the plumber's done a lot of work in the pool, and the guys have been laying out the foundation for the stairs and the landing here. The Metalite crew did come back for two days. They were waiting on the flooring for the electrical room and the and the pump room. So then when that was done, they came back and just put up the walls for these two rooms that I'll go in and show you. So this is the electrical panel room and the, and the pump house for the mechanical room for the pool. So remember last video I talked about the breezeway and it's starting to, starting to take more shape now that some of these walls are up. So I'm, I'm entering the breezeway from the rear. And the first thing I'll come to here on my right will be the pool pump room or mechanical room. So this is gonna house all the pool equipment and this is where our main water will come into the house from our tank. I asked them to come up with a ventilation plan as well because I'm not putting air conditioning in these two rooms but I still need some type of ventilation so we're gonna put some quiet fans here on each side of the of the door or the of the wall here so this this area is going to be covered by the second floor so it's kind of like a tunnel uh, as I move forward towards the front of the house, this will be the electrical room. So we'll have our panel here, panel boxes. And then I've got, I've got these two walls to use for my solar projects. And there's a little nook here for some storage as well. And as you come through the breezeway, this, if you turn right, you'll head towards the pool and the living room. If you turn left, you'll exit the side of the house over here. So those are the updates for the house projects. I've been busy working down the hill on the Chateau d'If. That door project is finished if you want to check that out. I just finished the uh, the final steps on the door this morning. I think that's all for this update. Thanks for watching.